How are you guys doing today? I'm Tony McAfee with Mobile Cup of Joe. Um, I've got an awesome video for you today. We're going to be looking at the new leaked build of Android 5.0 Lollipop for the 2012 Nexus 7. And hopefully, we're going to be able to help you answer the question, could a used $100 device help satisfy my immediate need for Android 5.0 Lollipop? But before we get into it, why don't you go ahead and grab your coffee cup, fill it up, bring it over, sit on down, Take a swig from your Rubble Cup of Joe. Let's go ahead and dive right in. And first, we'll go ahead and look at settings and show you that this is indeed running 5.0. Gotta love the animations that they've added here. And there you have it, 5.0 Lollipop. Let's see if we can get it to the Angry Bird game. And there it is. Okay. I don't know if you guys have tried this game, but if you have, I'm pretty sure it's impossible. I haven't been able to get even one score on the scoreboard there. So let's go ahead and look at some of the animations in the system. Um, when you slide these back and forth, you see that beautiful animation at the top there where it's showing the settings button and hiding the battery percentage. Really, really nice. In the lock screen, you've got what you basically what you've seen in any other build of uh, Android 5.0 for the lock screen. If I had notifications, they would show up there. Got the new Android 5.0, Google Now. Um, of course, I did have to install Google Launcher. This had the original Nexus 7 launcher on it in this build. And you can see that opening apps, it's still not as quick as what you might have expected from when you purchased the device, but it is better in general than, uh, well, definitely better than the AOSP builds that I've used on the device. Um, the AOSP builds ha were not this snappy, they weren't this smooth when you're scrolling the web. Um, everything just seems to be a little bit more on par with what you might expect from Google. You do see some lag there when you open the um, recent apps. Uh, they call this the overview button. I didn't know that. I just thought it was called the multitasking button or the recent apps button, but apparently this is now overview. Um, it is pretty snappy, doesn't seem to lag too much when you select a new app to go into. Uh, but if you wanted to do something like uh, screen pinning, which is a new feature, say you want to hand someone the device and let them check their email, you might go to gmail.com, tap on the overview button, scroll up, and there's your pin. This is, a, this is an option that you'll have to turn on, so I will show you how to turn that on. Um, there you have it, you're pinned, you can't go home. Um, you can, if you go back, it will just go back to the last website. You can't go to your overview. To turn it off, what you have to do is hold the back and overview buttons at the same time. It will even give you the prompt there at the bottom. There you go, the screen's unpinned, and you're back to your overview. Um, you can only set the most recent app to be pinned, so if you want to change to a different app, you can go ahead and just select it in Recents and click the Recent button, and there it is with the pin icon. I don't know why they didn't give you the option to set any app, but they didn't. Let's go ahead and go back into Settings. Oh. We do have it set in portrait mode. Uh, obviously you have the portrait and auto rotation. It does seem like they've changed the way some of those buttons work. Um, auto rotation is a little bit laggy the first time you do it. And if you're in an app, it tends to lag. Sometimes I'll lose my background momentarily. Um, but then once you've done it a few times, um, it'll catch up with itself. But again, that's just if you're turning it back and forth over and over. Um, in general, for first time turning, it's still gonna lag. And let's find where the screen pinning option is I'm not in display. Here we go. Um, so that is the option you'll want to turn on for screen pinning. Uh, it does not come turned on out of the box. So just go ahead and 
flip that on and you'll have the option to screen pin like I showed you a moment ago. So final thoughts here, um, apps do open okay, you know, sometimes they lag a little bit, so it is a little bit surprising to see this as a release from Google. I would have thought that it'd be a little bit snappier than it was, but as I said, when I'm comparing it to the source-built ROMs that I've used, um, the CM11 um, source-built ROM, or CM12, I'm sorry, source-built ROMs, um, this is just blows them out of the park. It's so much better. Another interesting thing here is when you use the tap to go where you just take two devices and tap them together with NFC uh, like so during the setup process, it will actually, this is the home screen on my OnePlus One, the screenshot you're seeing now. And after tap to go, this is the home screen on my Nexus 7. Um, so this is while it was downloading apps, it actually set my home screen up the same way I had it on my uh, one plus one, uh, same order, same icons, everything, and started downloading those uh, those apps and installing them. So any of the apps that it already had downloaded, Google Plus and such, um, it would go ahead and put them directly where they were on my home screen. Uh, as you can see here, uh, it even pulled the same background in, which is funny because it's not even a background I had installed on the phone. Uh, it did have to be running Google Now Launcher for this, though. So in closing, you can see that this is a totally viable option for a 5.0 tablet. Mind you, it is not going to perform like any of the other 5.0 devices just because of the difference in specs. But when it comes to uh, the question, can I buy a $100 device and get Android 5.0 to tide me over until I can afford a new device, this may be an option for you. So I strongly encourage you to go ahead and check it out, maybe pick one up used. Thank you guys so much for watching my first look at Android 5.0 Lollipop on the 2012 Nexus 7. I am a firm believer that this is the build we will be seeing on the, the 2012 Nexus 7 when it when the OTA, OTA releases. Uh, I hope that we were able to help you guys answer any questions you had about it, and if we missed anything in the video, uh, do go ahead and let us know in the comments any questions you have, and I'll be happy to answer those throughout the week. Thanks for watching Mobile Cup of Joe. Thank you.